Welcome to my latest Where to Ride video, alternatively titled 90 Miles in Two Days and One Night at Carolina Adventure World. Carolina Adventure World is located near Winsboro, South Carolina, off of exit 46 from Interstate 77. It's easily accessed in less than three miles from the exit. I did learn that it's good to take the driveway at an angle with a loaded down truck. I left the foot of my trailer as a souvenir. You're welcome, Carolina Adventure World. The park is on 2,600 acres of private land with 100 miles of trails. There are other amenities like a small dirt oval track, dirt drag strip, mud bogs, and what is listed as a motocross track, but it's mostly just another trail that needs a bit of work. The main area contains a pavilion with some riding gear for sale, at least in non-quarantine times, a grill and snack bar and garage where they rent dirt bikes, ATVs, and side-by-sides. There's also a paid wash station or stations with good water pressure, but no end on the water hose, and you're still surrounded by mud while trying to clean your machine, but at least it's there. You can get a single day pass or stay in tent camp, bring your RV, or rent one of the cabins so you have lots of options. We rented a cabin. A single day adult pass is $42.50, but a three day pass is $70, so the more days you ride, the better the value. An annual pass is $488 for an adult. They even offer recovery services if you break down. Just be aware the cost is $50 an hour. The park is basically open rain or shine, and there are no weather related refunds. Pay at the gate, sign the waiver, and once you park your trailer and unload, you never have to get in your car or truck again until you are leaving. Once you're in the park, it is up to you to use your judgment on how to stay safe. I was quite surprised at how many people seem to enjoy the hobby by riding with no helmet, flip-flops, and a beer in one hand. My buddy nicknamed those trips the Brew Cruise. For those of us who do suit up and like to haul the mail, it's a great place to ride. We rode over 90 miles from Friday evening through Sunday evening. Trails are marked clearly by number, as well as if they are one-way or two-way directional. The trail map gives you a good idea of where to go, and all trails lead back eventually to the main trails called SRs or state roads. There are plenty of signs on the main trails showing directions to the parking lot so you can get back easily when you're done riding, nearly out of gas, or towing someone who's having a bad day. There are trails for all difficulty levels and speeds. You can easily bring small kids learning to ride and cruise through the main roads or bring your race quad or razor turbo and rail the one-way trails at race speeds. Trail conditions are decent considering how much traffic the trails get. We came after four days of tropic storm rains, so there was no lack of mud. However, the impressive thing is how fast the trails dry up in the hot South Carolina summer sun. Just a few hours made a huge difference. As I mentioned earlier, the park is open rain or shine. It's great not to have to worry about your trip getting rained out and the park closing, but the trade-off is there will be some major ruts in places especially with so many side-by-sides with large tires out and about these days. You can access SR1 or 17 from the parking lot and they will both lead you to most of the trails. SR18 branches from 17 and provides more trail access. You can cover most trails quickly and then hit them again once you have an idea of where you can go fast and where you need to ease up. Trail 4 is a great longer loop but can get really muddy after rain, especially after you go through the clearing and head back down. I've seen peanut butter that wasn't as thick and sticky. I spent some quality time with my pressure washer when I got home, even after rinsing my quad twice at the wash station. And with the wash station, bring lots of dollar bills. Trail 6 is also a good longer one-way trail with plenty of turns and jumps. The jumps are actually put in to control water runoff, but they add some nice spice to the trail and make it better than just riding on a dirt road. Trail 5 is a great quick trail that you can run multiple times practicing your speed and jumps, or you can branch off of 5 to get to the lower areas and then return on some great steeper hill climbs. The Paraline Trail is also a fun main trail with some views, and you can get from the parking lot to other places. Be aware the first part has a river crossing that can get about 3 feet deep with heavy rains. Make your decisions accordingly. One thing you will notice is the overall lack of rocks on the trails, which is a nice break from something really technical like Brown Mountain in North Carolina which never lets up with rocks. This means you can use much less energy to ride longer and faster. If you're someone who really loves the technical terrain, be aware you won't find as much of that here. If you have a good set of lights, night riding can also be fun and something different. I would recommend looking at the map before night riding if it's your first time at the park. This was learned from experience with us, as I mentioned earlier, 
and I'll be doing a separate video on that Carolina adventure. Overall, it is a great place to ride and definitely worth coming to for a long weekend. So load up and head on down. I'll post a separate, longer, non-narrated video of the trails so you can see more of the park if you want. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification alarm. And happy riding. I knew you were going to send it. I was like, oh, you probably got up about that high.